Glad y'all could be here tonight. I'm glad you got the opportunity to see me. All right, let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Grace Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for bringing everybody home safely again tonight. Lord, and the blessing you bestowed upon Jasmine for her college. And Lord, I, I pray that you'd watch over my wife and Danny Mallory and Rush Limbaugh and Lord Brother Raj and uh, Lord Derek. Uh, I understand he's supposed to get another blood transfusion and I pray that you'd help the doctors find out where it's going and get it stopped and heal them up, Lord. And Lord, I, I heard his brother might be induced in a coma. Uh, Lord, please uh, heal him. Lord, raise him up from that bed of affliction. Lord, we thank you for it. Be with us tonight as we read the word of God, Lord, and the girls sing. And Lord, I pray we get a blessing from your word. Lord, forgive me, I'm a little sleepy myself, but uh, help us to enjoy our time together with thee. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Oh, boy. All right, what do you got here, Jasmine? That's what it is. I will meet you in the morning.
that water went down the wrong pipe. Amen. Well, hello and good evening, everyone. Hello, Johnny Gunner. I'm glad to see you with us in spirit. And Rufus. Amen. Catherine. And uh, Teresa and Tommy, I'm assuming. All right. <clears throat> I get done choking here. We'll get started. I want to read to you from uh, J. Vernon McGee and what he says at the beginning of chapter 2 of Ezekiel. Like I said the other night, Ezekiel is a hard book for me. And uh, so we're going to have to do a lot of studying uh, as we go through this book. Uh, one thing I, I saw, you know, to get over chapter 38 is dealing with Gog and Magog. And they're the ones going to move against the mountains of Israel. And uh, it says that God's going to put a hook in there and draw them. He's going to move them, and pull them down to Jerusalem, and he's going to destroy them. And, uh, you know, do you remember what prophecy is back when we first started this Bible study? That's history written in advance. And Ezekiel, as a prophet, has a lot to say about the last days. Amen. And so I'm sure it's going to be interesting. It's going to be hard, but it's going to be interesting. Amen. Uh, and Ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 1. The theme here is Ezekiel's call and preparation in office as a watchman. It says, apparently after the vision Ezekiel had seen in chapter 1 there, he was not standing up but was down on his face. He will now receive a call and commission and an endowment with power for the office to which God has called him. Son of man, God addresses him as son of man. This title was found exactly 100 times in the book of Ezekiel. Daniel also is called the son of man. Only these two men in the Old Testament were called by this title. This is also the title that the Lord Jesus appropriated to himself 86 times in the New Testament. He used this title for himself. It speaks of him and his rejection, his humiliation, and his exaltation. He is the son of man. Ezekiel did pass through a great deal of suffering. If someone were to ask me whose position I would rather have or not have, Daniel's, Jeremiah's, or Ezekiel's, I would say I would rather not have Ezekiel's. Certainly Daniel was in danger in the court of Babylon. Just ask the lions down there in the den where Daniel spent the night with them. If God had not intervened, Daniel would have been lion food. But I would prefer his job to Ezekiel's because he at least had luxurious quarters there in the palace of the king of Babylon. Also, Jeremiah at this time was pretty much retired, although he had been in grave danger during, the, during his active ministry until the deportation of the people into captivity. However, this man Ezekiel was sent to do a hard job, a very difficult job. He had the job of speaking to an apostate people. He was sent to a people who thought they were God's people, but actually they were in rebellion against God. The Spirit of God now comes upon Ezekiel and prepares him for this office. So in chapter 2, beginning in verse 1, And he said unto me, Son of man, stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. And the Spirit entered into me, when he spake unto me, and set me upon my feet, that I heard him that spake unto me. And he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that hath rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me, even unto this very day. For they are impudent children and stiff-hearted. I do send thee unto them, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, and they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house, yet shall know that there hath been a prophet among them. 
And thou son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns be with thee. And thou doest well among scorpions, be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. And thou shalt speak my words unto them, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for, the, for they are the most rebellious. But thou, son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. When I looked, behold, an hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein. And he spread it before me, and it was written within and without. And there was written therein lamentations and mourning and woe. Chapter 3. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest, eat this roll, and go speak unto the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it, eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. And he said unto me, Son of man, Go get thee unto the house of Israel and speak with my words unto them. Thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech and of a hard language, but to the house of Israel. Not to many people of a strange speech and of a hard language, whose words thou canst not understand. Surely had I sent you to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted. Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces, and thy forehead strong against their foreheads. As an adamant harder than flint have I made thy forehead. Fear them not, neither be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. Listen, I can tell you a little something about that after preaching all these years. When you get in there and you get to preaching on people's sin and you believe that God gave you the message, I'm going to tell you what you ought to see some of the hard looks that a preacher gets and the rebellious looks that you get, how they roll their eyes and they huff and they puff. And I'm telling you what, it's not easy. Moreover, he said unto me, son of man, all my words that I shall speak unto thee, receive in thine heart and hear with thine ears. And go get thee to them of the captivity unto the children of thy people and speak unto them and tell them, thus saith the Lord God, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. Then the spirit took me up and I heard behind me a voice of a great rushing saying, blessed be the glory of the Lord from this place, from his place. I'm sorry. I heard also the noise of the wings of the living creatures that touched one another and the noise of the wheels over against them, and the noise of a great rushing. So the Spirit lifted me up and took me away, and I went in bitterness in the heat of my spirit, but the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. Then I came to them of the captivity at Tel Abib, that dwelt by the river Kibar, and I sat where they sat, and remained there astonished among them seven days. And it came to pass at the end of seven days that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth, and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity but his blood will I require at thine hand. You know, if God lays on your heart to witness somebody or you have a lost friend or neighbor and, and you're too timid and afraid to tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ, that if they die, that you, their blood will be on your hands. Amen. He says, yet if thou warn the wicked and he turn not from his wickedness nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Amen. It means, hey, you did what you were supposed to do. 
If they won't receive it, that's not your problem. They'll answer for themselves, but you'll be free from the blood of that lost wicked person. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit adultery, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die, because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin, and his righteousness which he hath done shall not be remembered, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live, because he is warned. Also thou hast delivered thy soul. And the hand of the Lord was there upon me, and he said unto me, Arise, go forth into the plain, and I will there talk with thee. Then I arose and went forth into the plain, and behold, the glory of the Lord stood there, as the glory which I saw by the river Kibar, and I fell on my face. Excuse me. Verse 24. Then the Spirit entered into me and set me upon my feet and spake with me and said unto me, Go shut thyself within thine house. But thou, O son of man, behold, they shall put bands upon thee and shall bind thee with them and thou shalt not go out among them. And I will make thy tongue cleave to the roof of thy mouth, that thou shalt be dumb, and shalt not be to them a reprover, for they are a rebellious house. But when I speak with thee, I will open thy mouth. Thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, He that heareth, let him hear. He that forbeareth, let him forbear, for they are a rebellious house. Are you getting the message here? God hates rebellion. He says rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Amen. And he suffers not a witch to live. Yeah. Chapter 4. Thou also, son of man, take thee a tile and lay it before thee and portray upon it the city, even Jerusalem. And lay siege against it and build a fort against it and cast a mount against it. Set the camp also against it, and set battering rams against it round about. Moreover, take thou unto thee an iron pan, and set it for a wall of iron between thee and the city, and set thy face against it, and it shall be, shall be besieged. And thou shalt lay siege against it. This shall be a sign to the house of Israel. Lie thou also upon thy left side, and lay the iniquity of the house of Israel upon it, according to the number of the days that thou shalt lie upon it, shalt, the number of days thou shalt lie upon it, shalt bear their iniquity. For I have laid upon thee the years of their iniquity, according to the number of days, three hundred and ninety days. So shalt thou bear the iniquity of the house of Israel. And when thou hast accomplished them, lie again on the right side, thou shalt bear the iniquity of the house of Judah 40 days. I have pointed thee each day for a year. Therefore, thou shalt set thy face toward the siege of Jerusalem, and thine arm shall be uncovered, and thou shalt prophesy against it. And behold, I will lay bands upon thee, and thou shalt not turn thee from one side to, the, to another till thou hast ended the days of thy siege. I tell you, I can understand why J. Vernon McGee would rather uh, be a Daniel than a Jeremiah or a Ezekiel, amen, in these days. Verse 9, Take thou also unto thee wheat and barley and beans and lentils and millet and fishes and put them in one vessel and make thee bread thereof according to the number of the days that thou shalt lie upon thy side. Three hundred and ninety days shalt thou eat thereof. And thy meat which shalt thou shalt eat shall eat shall be by weight twenty shekels a day. From the time to time shalt thou eat it. Thou shalt drink also water by measure, the sixth part of an hen. From time to time shalt thou drink. Thou shalt eat it as barley cakes, and thou shalt bake it with the dung that cometh out of a man in their sight. So the waste product of a human being, he was supposed to use that to heat his food 
amen, to cook his food. And the Lord said, even thus shall the children of Israel eat their defiled bread among the Gentiles, whither I will drive them. Then said I, O oh Lord God, behold, my soul hath not been polluted. For from my youth up, even until now, have I not eaten of that which dieth of itself or is torn in pieces? Neither came there abominable flesh into my mouth. Then he said unto me, Lo, I have given thee cow's dung for man's dung, and thou shalt prepare thy bread therewith. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, behold, I will break the staff of bread in Jerusalem, and they shall eat bread by weight and with care, and they shall drink water by measure and with astonishment, that they may want bread and water and be astonished one with another and consume away for their iniquity. He's going to send a famine in there. Amen. I'm telling you, Ezekiel's a rough book. God's judgment, he's about sick and tired of the rebellion. And you know, I wonder if he's sick and tired of the rebellion in the lives of the people that profess to know him as as his, as the Savior. Christians. I mean, ones that have never changed. They're still the same old way they've always been. They don't desire to look in to see what would please the Lord. They just rather do their own thing. You think he's getting tired of that too in this day and age? Look at the churches. The churches are small and shrinking. If they're large, most of the time it's because they're an entertainment center and they're appealing to the flesh to keep people coming. But just to hear the word of God, to hear the preaching and to change their ways, turn from their wicked ways and to please the Lord, they don't want it. Amen. Very few. Chapter five, verse one. Thou son of man, take thee a sharp knife. Take thee a barber's razor and cause it to pass upon thine head and upon thy beard. Then take thee balances to weigh and divide the hair. Thou shalt burn with fire a third part in the midst of the city. When the days of the siege are fulfilled, thou shalt take a third part and smite about it with a knife. And the third part thou shalt scatter in the wind. And I will draw out a sword after them. Thou shalt also take thereof a few in number and bind them in thy skirts. Then take of them again and cast them into the midst of the fire and burn them in the fire. For thereof shall fire come forth into all the house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord God, this is Jerusalem. I have set it in the midst of the nations and countries that are round about her. You know, I, I think, uh, I can't remember who it was, but uh, I thought somebody said at one time that Jerusalem was in the center of the earth. I mean, in the circumference. I don't know if that's so. I never researched it. But that's kind of interesting with what he says here, where he says he has set it in the midst of the nations and the countries that are around about her. Verse 6, she hath changed my judgments into wickedness more than the nations and my statutes more than the countries that are around about her. For they have refused my judgments and my statutes. They have not walked in them. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because you multiplied more than the nations that are round about you and have not walked in my statutes, neither have kept my judgments, neither have done according to the judgments of the nations that are round about you. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I, even I am against thee and will execute judgments in the midst of thee in the sight of the nations. And I will do in thee that which I have not done, whereunto I will not do any more the like because of all thine abominations. Therefore the father shall eat the sons in the midst of thee, and the sons shall eat their fathers, and I will execute judgment in thee, and the whole remnant of thee will I scatter into all the winds. Think about that. Where the fathers will eat the sons, and the sons will eat the fathers. You know, over in Deuteronomy, where the Lord said that the tender and delicate woman among you that would dare to put her foot upon the ground, she would eat the young that come out from between her feet. And in the siege, that's exactly what Israel had to do. They ate their own children. 
Wherefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, surely because thou hast defiled my sanctuary with all thy detestable things and with all thine abominations, therefore will I also diminish thee. Neither shall mine eye spare, neither will I have any pity. The third part of thee shall die with the pestilence, and with famine shall they be consumed in the midst of thee. And a third part shall fall by the sword round about thee. Think about the COVID virus and how many people have died in a year. You don't think that God can bring this to pass? Look around you. And I will scatter a third part in all the winds, and I will draw out a sword after them. Thus shall mine anger be accomplished, and I will cause my fury to rest upon them, and I will be comforted. They shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it in my zeal when I have accomplished my fury in them. Moreover, I will make thee waste and a reproach among the nations that are round about thee in the sight of all that pass by. So it shall be a reproach and a taunt and instruction and an astonishment unto the nations that are round about thee. When I ex execute judgments in thee in anger and in fury and furious rebukes, I, the Lord, have spoken it. And I shall send upon them the evil arrows of famine, which shall be for their destruction, and which I will send to destroy you, and I will increase the famine upon you and will break your staff of bread. So will I send upon you famine and evil beasts. They shall bereave thee, and pestilence and blood shall pass through thee. And I will bring the sword upon thee. I, the Lord, have spoken it. Amen. Think about these things. He says they're coming. That's what he told Israel. It's coming for America, too. In the next few weeks, we're going to be preaching on eschatology and Bible prophecy and a lot of it will be out of Ezekiel so if you miss any of it you can always go back and get it but I'm going to be doing that also in our church services amen uh, Lord willing so you might want to get a paper pen and take notes that's it for tonight let's pray Grace Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for the reading of that word. Lord, uh, be with all the folks that tune in and listen. I pray that they might be encouraged, Lord, to study the word of God and uh, go through the book of Ezekiel themselves and read it before we get to it. And Lord, we thank you for it. Lord, again, I pray you bless those children in the hospital. Lord, uh, my little buddy Derek and his brother Dylan and Lord, we're glad that Kim is doing better at home. And Lord, just watch over. Watch over all my friends, relatives, cousins, nieces, nephews, brothers, sisters, and their mates. And Lord, those that are lost, I pray you deal with. And Lord, that they might come to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And those that are saved, that you might strengthen them and help them in these last days. For it's in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray and ask these things. Amen. All right, God bless you and have a wonderful evening, as Kathy said, and a safe night. Amen. And James Francis James, old JJ tuning in late, no surprise. Have a good evening. And good night from Teresa and Linda. And let's see.